Good morning, church family. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice and be glad in it. Shall we all stand for our call to worship? In Psalms 100, the word of God tells us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And know ye the Lord is, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for the blessing us with another day and giving us the privilege to worship you this Sunday. Holy Spirit, we ask that you have your way and that you will be done in this service. Use us, use this service to transform us and shape us into being more like you. As we get ready to worship you through song, use our mouths to glorify and lift up your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Oh, what a price he paid For me, your way was made 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Yes, yes, yes. Surely he died on Calvary. Praise be to God. Amen. We're grateful to God to be here this morning. Amen. Praise be to God. And I pray that you all have had a wonderful and blessed, amen, uh, holiday, 4th of July. Praise be to God. Amen. With all of the banging going on, praise be to God. Amen. Uh, amen. So we're just grateful to God that you are tuning in with us today, all of our members I want to say good morning to Park Windsor Baptist Church, to all of our children, our senior, senior saints, to our mature saints, to uh, our youth and young adults, to our visitors out there. Uh, we welcome you this morning in our worship today. We know that you're going to be blessed, amen. You've already been blessed by our ensemble, amen. We want to thank God for them. Praise be to God. And then also we've been led in our worship service today by Deacon Beckett, amen, praise be to God, it's good to see him, amen, and uh, we do want to thank God for all of you tuning in. Let us pray, amen. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, how we do praise and magnify your name, Lord God, this is your hour, this is your time, this is your moment, oh God. We stand as your humble servant to be used by you, oh God, not to put on a show, oh God, but that Others may hear your word and be blessed and healed and delivered and strengthened and encouraged and motivated in the power of your word. Your word says that heaven and earth shall pass away, but thy word will stand forever. And then, Lord God, after hearing your word, oh God, we just don't want to hear it. We want to be doers. We want to put your word into personal application in our lives, oh God. So bless now, O oh God, and then, O oh God, after hearing your word, O oh God, we pray that someone will come to know you in a personal way. Somebody will come and rededicate their lives back to you, and there's someone, O oh God, who is saved but is looking for a place where they can be used by you, will find a church home where they can serve you uh, in spirit and in truth. We thank you and we praise you right now in the name of Jesus, amen. Come on, let's give God praise. <laughs> praise be to God. We do give our praise to our Father who is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Uh, to our ministers, Reverend Bolden, uh, Snipes, Ross, and Brown in their absence. To our deacon, Deacon Beckett, and to our officers, to uh, our deacons, to our deaconesses, to our mothers to our trustees, to the entire church body, amen. To you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, ladies and gentlemen, soldiers of the cross, enemies, if they be any, God is good, y'all. I said the Lord is good. And he's not just good sometime, church family, but he is good what? He is good all the time, amen. So we're grateful to God that you have tuned in today uh, for our first Sunday Amen in July. Amen. Wow, we are moving fast, moving real fast. Amen. We are grateful to God that he has allowed us to gather together uh, today. Amen. We do thank God for all of you here. Uh, to our uh, ensemble, we'll say grateful to God for you. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Uh, help me, if you will, as I prepare to share the word of God, as we prepare to go to the table of the Lord. I need the
Come on, church, help me. I need the oh, I need thee. How many of you need the Lord today? church where you are in front of your TV right now wherever you are right now as you listening come on let's praise God for another day's journey let's praise God that he's allowed us to worship him in spirit and in truth come on church let's praise God this morning oh God he has allowed us to see another first Sunday to God be the glory I dare you wherever you are right now to lift up your hands I dare you wherever you are to just begin to praise him and to thank you for what he's done in your life. Hallelujah. We do praise you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a word from the Lord. I want you to turn your Bibles to John the 17th chapter, John the 17th chapter, John the 17th chapter, John the 17th chapter, starting at that sixth verse, very powerful scripture, reading from the King James Version. Very powerful scripture there. Let me set the tone for you or to set the scene for you if I could. Jesus is on his way to Calvary. His preparation for uh, his crucifixion is coming. Within this text prior to three days before this time of his discourse with his disciples in the upper room, Jesus is getting ready to go to Calvary. We find ourselves here because Jesus is getting ready. Not only if you read the text in verses 1, we find out that Jesus is praying for himself. He is praying that uh, him and his father would be, would be glorified, that he would glorify the father. Amen. And then uh, he moves down and he begins to pray the prayer that I'm getting ready to read in this text. Right. Listen to what he says. He says, I have manifest thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were and that, excuse me, and thou gavest me them and they have kept thy word. Now they have known all the things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. And I, and it says, and have known surely that I came out from them, from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. Here's the prayer. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. 
you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Just for a few moments, my brothers and sisters, as we continue our series on prayer, I want to talk about Jesus is praying for us. Jesus is praying for us, or you can just say in a personal pronoun, if you will, Jesus is praying for me. Amen. The great theologian, Scottish theologian, Robert Murray McChain said, a 19th century Scottish minister said, if I could hear Christ praying, if I could hear Christ praying for me in the next room, I would not fear a million enemies. Yet the distance makes no difference. He is praying for me. That's an awesome and amazing statement by the Scottish theologian who says that if I could hear my Savior praying, if I could hear God praying in the next room, no matter where my enemies are, near or far, it wouldn't bother me because I know that the Lord hears my prayer and I know that the Lord is protecting me. Jesus prayed. Jesus, it was his custom to pray. He prayed all the time. He's always praying to the Father. In Luke chapter 6, verse 12, in the King James Version, we find that before he chose his 12 disciples, he prayed all night. He prayed for these 12 men at this time because he's getting ready to leave. He's getting ready to go away. And he knew that they had the awesome responsibility of continuing the gospel and continuing down here on earth on the journey of making sure that the message of Jesus is continuing to go forward. He knew that they were going to need his, his strength and need the power of God to fulfill what God had mandated them to do in Matthew chapter 28. And that was to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Yes, yes. Baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and, and, and encourage them to do all that I have commanded them to do. He knew that, that they had the awesome responsibility just as we have the awesome responsibility to continue to preach and to teach God's word. He was no longer going to be physically here to be with them. Is anybody hearing me? He says, if, he, says, he says, I must go away in order for the comforter, the paraclete, the Holy Ghost be with you. And so his whole intention was not to be here. And so we find that he prayed for the 12 apostles of, the, of these disciples that he had left. In Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 26, verse 42 in the NIV, we see him praying in the garden of Gethsemane as he contemplates the cross, saying, Father, my Father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. In the King John, Jesus said, let's I go away. He said, in other words, let this cup pass from me. He is praying, Lord, if I don't have to deal with this bitter cup, take it away. Because at no time, Lord, have you and I have ever been separated. But now, Lord, he prays his father, but then as quickly as he says that, he says, but Lord, not my will, but your will be done. In Luke chapter 23, 34, and verse 46 in the King James Version, we find Jesus praying on the cross. 
Notice what verse 34 says. Then it says, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Do you see that? And then in verse 46, he says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Jesus was constantly, even at the time of death, on the cross, he was still praying. Today, church family, before the Lord Jesus Christ, as we come to the table, Lord, as we come to remember that he had been crucified, John gives us a glimpse into the Savior's prayer. He allows us to listen in into Jesus' prayer time as he calls on the Lord on our behalf. I am sure that we do not have a recorded of all of the words that he has said in this prayer that evening, but the portion that we have in John chapter 17 lets us know where Jesus' mind was that night. As the cross of Calvary appeared before him, as Israel would once and for all reject him, as their Messiah, and even with his own disciples forsaking him, Jesus took the time to pray for his people. I'm on the cross, and I still have time to pray. I'm being ridiculed, but I still have time to pray for you. I've been beaten, I've been scorned, I've been laughed at. I even had the point of them casting lots. And Jesus says that I still have you in mind. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful to God that Jesus had me on his mind. And that Jesus had you and I on his mind when he went to Calvary. Oh, yes, he prayed. His first prayer in this text for himself. But then secondly, he went on to pray for his disciples. He went to pray on for the church who were coming in the future. He is praying for you and I today. And I'm grateful to God that we serve a God that is still praying for us. In fact, if you are saved, Jesus is praying for you, my brothers and sisters. Notice how Jesus opens his prayer by praying for himself, anticipating and, uh, anticipating and rejoicing with the Father that they will be glorified in heaven. That's in verses 1 through 5. And then he turns his attention Outward to pray for his people in verses 6 through 26. That's where we are right now. I want to focus my attention on as we come to the table of the Lord and see what is it that Jesus was praying for. Notice in verse 9, if I could, if I can just, just touch on it. He says, I pray not for the world, but for them which... Thou hast given me for thine. He says, that's who I'm praying. Those whom you have given me, that's who I'm praying for. Now, that's a heavy statement. That's a big statement there. Brother Johnson, it's because of the simple fact, he makes it clear his purpose and his goal in his prayer. He says, I'm not praying for the world, that, that kind of that blew my mind right there. That kind of blew my mind when he said that I would, I'm not praying for the world. It would, it would give you the indication or uh, give you uh, uh, some type of thought in your head that Jesus has no concern for the world. But that's not true. Why do we know that? Because it was not 
He was not praying for the world because he did not love the world because John 3.16 tells us that he does love the world. He says, God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him would not perish but have everlasting life. It was not because the world did not need prayer because the world did need prayer. The world does need prayer. In Luke 23, 34, he prayed that the world will be forgiven for the forgiveness of their sin. He prayed that, that, that the gospel will be preached and that lives will be converted. And so as we listen in to Jesus, as we get ready to come to the table of the Lord, I want to set the tone is that I'm grateful to God and we ought to be grateful to God that God is praying for us today. Yes, I know that the world needs prayer. I know that we are in a pandemic. I know we are, we are living in a world of hatred and sin. I know that we're living in a world of the haves and the have-nots. I know that we're living in a world where there's a, there is confusion all around us. But my purpose today, my brothers and sisters, my Christian friends, those who are tuning in this morning, who are listening to me, Yes, we're going to pray for the world, but specifically, I want you to know that Jesus is praying for us because we are still in this world. We may not be of this world, but we are still in this world. And he knew that this day was going to come. He knew that confusion was going to come in this world today. He already knew that the pandemic was coming. He knew that the racial upheavalness was coming. He knew all of these things were coming. And he was just like he was preparing his 12 disciples. He is preparing, preparing us as his disciples today to help us to realize that even though you are in this world, you are not of this world. So he says, let me share what I want you to know, why I am praying for you. In this Fourth of July weekend, I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, why Jesus is praying for us today. And that is this. First of all, it's in verses 11 through 12. He is praying that we be unified, that we be secured, if we would. He said that in the world there is division. But in the text, he says, Lord, like you and I are one, I pray that those who are praying that these 12 disciples that are getting ready to go out into the world, that they be unified and not be divided against each other. Because we are living in a world, my brothers and sisters, and I'm not talking about the world, I'm talking about us as believers. Sometimes we can become divided amongst ourselves. As we serve and as we minister, as we pray and as we teach the word of God, this is not the time for us to be divided. This is not the time for us to determine what denomination is better than the other denomination who are under Christ. This is not about that. This is not about if the Baptists are better or the holiness is better. It's not about if Episcopalians are better. But this is about us working together for one common good. And that is to give the glory to God. So he prayed that they be unified. Lord, don't allow them to be divided right now. Don't let them be angry and upset with each other. Don't allow them to be divided in their teaching and the preaching of God's word. Don't let them be divided, Lord, as they serve. Don't be divided in their leadership. Because you realize Peter said, upon this rock, I build my church. Peter had it wrong. He thought that God was going to establish his church on him. But when he used that word rock, it's a small rock, Petra, small rock upon. He said, I'm building the church within your heart. And the gates of hell will not what? Prevail against it. So he praying for us right now, church family. Right now, my brothers and sisters, he's praying for unity in our homes. Can I please teach? Help me, Lord, to preach this thing. 
I don't know why God does what he does, but all I know, he has a purpose for what he's doing. Maybe because in the church we're, we're divided. Maybe because even in our homes we're divided. And even now God is testing our stick to itiveness. The Lord is testing our unity to see how, it, how selfish we are. He said, it's not about you, but it's about the Lord. Maybe he, he's trying to test the husband and the wife who now, who would normally be separated by work between eight hours. Now you're in the house together. Where you had to go to work, now you at home working. Ooh, Lord. Seeing each other's face day by day. Every now and then, it's going to rub off, y'all. You may get angry with each other. You may get upset with each other. And so the Lord has said, no, he said, he said, look, it's no time for all this arguing. There's no time for all of this dispute. There's no time for us to be angry and divided against each other. I need families to come together. In my permissive will, I'll allow a pandemic to come. I'll allow hurricanes to come. I'll allow a virus to come to keep you unified. Isn't it amazing that God sees the same thing in the United States that he sees in China? <laughs> the same thing he sees in China, he sees in Europe. The same thing he sees in Europe, he sees in Africa. He sees division. He sees separation. He sees all of this stuff. If he only saw the problem in the United States, what would be the purpose of sin a pandemic around the world? If everybody else is unified, why would he make everybody else? But what God sees is that there is division everywhere. And he's trying to remind us as believers the example that you see in the White House and the example that you see in the Senate and the example that you see in the House and the example that you see in our local officials of, of division. They can't come together. Don't allow that example to be us. Don't let that example be you. He says, I'm praying for you. Disciples, I'm praying for you because you're going to go in this world. You're going to see division. You're going to see all of this stuff. But I'm praying for you that you be unified as you and my father are unified. Is anybody hearing me? But then I see something else in this text. It's in verse 13. He's not only praying that they be unified, but he also prayed that we be satisfied. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me, Lord. He prays for his people to experience, watch it, he says, his joy. He says, he says the joy that you and I experience, Lord, I, I, I want my, my disciples to feel and experience that same joy. I, I, I want them to, to, to experience the satisfaction on what God can do in their lives. He's praying for them. He says, be satisfied. I'm praying that you will find joy. Not just be happy, but find joy. Find joy in the Lord. Because if you can find joy in the Lord, you can be satisfied. God said, I'll take you through this situation. He wants us to be satisfied. He's praying for his people to experience his joy, not just happiness, which is dependent upon our circumstance, but joy that is rooted in the Lord, in the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. The question is, are you satisfied? 
Is Jesus enough to satisfy you? Is his love enough to satisfy you? Is his peace enough to satisfy you? Is his joy enough to satisfy you? God can give you that satisfaction. He says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? He realized maybe God is trying, he's praying for us and praying for the disciples because they're getting ready to go out into a fingerfied world. A world that is materialistic. Maybe he saw that we were too tied up into things. Wrapped up in time. Now, he knows what we need. But maybe we have got, maybe these things have now become our gods. He said, don't, you're going to go, you, disciples, you're going to go out there. And people are going to try to pull you, influence you to be satisfied by the things of this world. He said, I'm praying that you be satisfied and that you will find joy in the word of God. That you will find joy in my love and find joy in my peace because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. It's not good news, my brothers and sisters. Many of us have been trying to find joy in the wrong places. Trying to find happiness in the wrong places. And so he says, I'm praying for you. I'm praying just like I was praying for my disciples then. I'm praying for my disciples today. He's praying for us as leaders in our church and as officers and as singers, as teachers. He says, I'm praying that you be unified. I'm praying that you be find satisfaction and joy in Jesus. But then here's another I see in verses 14 through 16. He says, I am praying that we be separated. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I didn't see it first, preacher, but, 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 I, but I see it now. I understand it now. He is praying. He says, look at here. You're going to be in this world. He said, now look, I'm not praying that you come out of it. He said, no, 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 you're going to have to go through this thing. You're going to have to go through the hell that is in this world. You're going to have to go through the trials and tribulations. I never said that you would not experience it. I didn't say that you wouldn't get sick. He says, I'm praying that you stay here. I know some of you want to get out. I know you want to quit. I know you want. He said, he says, I'm praying that you will be separated, that you will not be pulled back into sin, that you will not be pulled back in the satisfaction of the things of this world, that you will not be pulled back by the things that you're going to see in this world. He says, I pray that you be satisfied. I pray that you will be separated. Separated from what? He lets us know what the separation is. He said, I pray that you'll be separated from the evil that is in this world. The lying and the killing and the stealing that is in this world. The jealousy and the racism that is in this world. Don't be pulled into that. And you're right, Dick. He says, come out from among them and be we what? Separate. Many of us as believers, we get saved and sometimes we can be pulled in or pulled back into our former world, the walks that we have, the talks that we have. We can be pulled back and be separated. He said, but what can separate us from the love of God? Nothing can separate from the love of God but as he walks as we walk on this journey but now as we walk on this journey there's a lot of enticement and a lot of things in this world that would influence us the Bible does say yield not to temptation 
for yielding is sin. Let us not be like, be like Lot's wife. She just had to take another look. She just had to take another peek. She just had to take one more glimpse of what she had left behind. Her husband told her, honey, when we walk out of Sodom and Gomorrah, don't look back. The Bible says in Luke 9, 62, if any man put his hand to the plow and looking back, it is not fit for the kingdom of God. And so the Lord said, don't you look back. The only time I want to look back, my brothers, is in my praise and in my time of worship. When I look back and wonder how the Lord has brought me over, I want to say hallelujah. Thank God that he brought me a mighty long way. And so, Lord, he is praying that we be separated, separated from the evil of this world, evil that we see every day when we watch CNN. And any other channel that you watch of the lies that are being told and the evil that is being told and the quickness that is being done in our world today. We are living in probably one of the worstest times in our lives right now. Racism has lifted its ugly head. They're not hiding in sheets anymore. So he says, I pray that you be separated. You're going to stand as a child of God, stand as a child of God. Even if it means taking, if, even if it means that they, you got to be ridiculed and even be persecuted, you may be scorned, you may even be killed on this journey. But hold on to God's unchanging hand. So Jesus says, I'm praying for you. That you continue to be unified. I'm praying for you that you'll be satisfied. I'm enough to satisfy you. Then he says, I'm praying that you would be separated. But then here's another that I saw in this text is in verses 17 through 19. He says, I'm praying that we, that we will be sanctified. Yes, Lord. He says uh, the word sanctified had the idea of purity, of being clean, to be separated. He said, I want you to continue to live a holy life. I, I, I want you to continue to walk and talk and act like a child of God. He says a whole lot of stuff out there, brothers. There's a whole lot of stuff out there, my sisters. There's a whole lot of things out there. He says, I'm praying that you will be sanctified. Live holy and talk holy and walk holy. Let your light shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. He says, because the only Bible that anybody would ever read is you. How you live and how you talk and where you go. And so he says, I pray that your mind would be changed. Think not like the world. Don't talk like the world. He says, don't get enticed into the world. He said, I'm praying that you could stand firm in your holiness. Oh, Lord. I know, the, I know it's tough because Paul says, even when I want to do good, evil is always around me. It's present. David says, who shall deliver me from this body of sin? And so he says, I'm praying that you be sanctified, to be set apart. He says, sanctification and holiness is not what you wear. No disrespect to anybody out there, but when I was growing up, I thought holiness meant uh, 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 when, because I saw those old mothers and old fathers in the church wearing long white dresses. 
I thought sanctification was in the white dress. I thought the sanctification was in my brothers and sisters, the black suit that we see every first Sunday. I thought that holiness and sanctification was in all of that stuff. But then the Bible says when I was a child, I thought like a child. I act like a child. But when I became a man, in other words, when I became spiritually mature, I put away those childless things. I understand that sanctification and holiness is not in the cloth, but it's in my heart. It's how I live. And so he says, I'm praying that you stay holy. Don't let the friends that you've been with before cause you to live, go back to your old lifestyle. Don't even allow your families and friends to cause you to go back to your drinking and smoking. Don't let no people cause you to go back to homemongering. Don't let them cause you to go back to things that I've kept you from and want to keep you from. So he was reminding them as he's reminding us, I'm not going to be with you physically. But the paraclete, the panuma, will be with you. When you see things coming your way, God says, remember, I made a way for you to escape. You don't have to go to the hog's pen. You can turn around. And so he says, I'm praying that you will be sanctified, set apart. Here it is. The last point I want to give is in, is in verse 24. He says, I'm, I, I'm praying for you, for us, for our future destination. Do you see that? Look at verse 24. It's right there in our text. He says, Father, I would that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Another word, God says, I'm not, said, I'm not only just praying for the unity that you have. I'm not only praying that you will be sanctified and separated and secured. He said, I'm praying for your future destination. He said, I died that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He says, don't be afraid. I'm going away. In my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare your future destination. Woo! Thank you, Lord. And that future destination is only to those who have accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. He said the reason why I'm praying for your future destination because the house that you're living in is going to decay away. Woo! It's going to be hit with sickness. He says, now when this earthly tabernacle is dissolved, I have a, a building, another building, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. He says, your future destination is paved with gold. Your future destination, there's 12 gates to the city, 12 to the east, 12 to the north, 12 to the south, and 12 to the west. He says, I'm praying for you that your future destination, that you are sealed to the day of redemption. He says, those whom the Lord has given me, can nobody, I mean not man, y'all, can take them out of the Father's hands. I'm glad about that. There's a whole lot of things that is enticing me to come out of the Lord's hand. But the Lord is praying for me that I be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For know that your labor, your labor is not in vain. Is anybody hearing me today? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for praying for me that I be unified. Thank you, Lord, for praying for me that we will be secured and satisfied, that we will have joy, that we will be separated 
But most of all, I shout today as I come to the table of the Lord for my future destination. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us a future destination. Thank you, Lord, for your preparation. Thank you. Thank you. Because the songwriter said, Jesus painted it all. And all to him all. Sin has left a crimson stain. But he has watched us whiter than snow. Thank God that mama prayed for me. Thank God that daddy prayed for me. Thank God that the church prays for me. But most of all, I think that God is praying for me. That I fail not. Thank you, Lord, for your word. God bless you. Somebody out there today. The Bible says that when your mother and your father forsake you, it said that he will be there for you. You didn't know if that Jesus was praying for you. I want you to know that Jesus is praying for you. For that person out there, you've never accepted Christ. What is he praying? He's praying that you will come to know him in a personal way. He's praying that you would not allow Satan to sit on you. Some of you are contemplating right now. Right now, you're, you're allowing Satan to sit on you right now. But I dare you to, where you are, is to pick up that phone right now. I dare you right now, where you are, to fall on your knees and say, Lord, forgive me for all of my sins. I acknowledge, Lord, that I need you in my life. And without you, Lord, I'm lost. The world is already lost, so, Lord, I'm looking for a Savior. I've listened to your word, and now I've been convicted by your word. And so if you're here today, if you've never accepted Christ, I extend Jesus to you right now. Tell the, tell the devil, move anything and anybody out of the way. See, I'm getting to this TV. I'm getting to my phone. I'm getting down on my knees right now and say, Lord, come into my life. All you got to do is call that number, Erico 323-756-3966. We have some counselors just waiting to hear from you. Don't get discouraged if the line is busy. Don't get discouraged if no one else, if the answer service comes on, that's all right. Leave a message. We're going to get with you. You might be here and you say, well, preacher, this pandemic and everything that's going on in this world, I have allowed the devil to separate me. I've allowed the enticement of this world to cause me to go backwards. But I want to rededicate my life back to God. I want to get back to Christ. I know that it is dangerous. It is super dangerous for me to be out of relationship with God. And so, Lord, I come right now, Lord. Help me to rededicate my life back to you. Help me be committed to put you, Lord, back on the throne of my life. I need you to lead it, God, Lord. I need you to lead it. And then you might be here today and you say, well, preacher, I'm looking for a place where I can serve God. I know you right now, and you said, well, preacher, we can't serve the Lord right now in this pandemic. We are, we are closed dead. That's not true. You can still serve the Lord in your praying. You can still serve the Lord in your, in, in, in your studying God's Word. You can still serve the Lord by reaching others on the phone and uh, on the iPad and many other ways. You can serve God by just shining a light. So if you're looking for a place to serve, you can come. Just dial that number, Eric code 323 7563966 six. 
Someone, come on, cry, come on. Don't you feel it? Come on, help yourself one more time. Come on, come on. we can all participate in this part of this service, and that is our offertorial In Luke 6:38 it says, "Give and it will be given to you." A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and runneth over, will be poured into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. If you would like to send your tithes and offerings by mail, you can do that. Our church address is 1842 West 108th Street. That's Los Angeles, California, 90047. You can also drop your tithes and offering off in the mail slot. You can also, uh, if you haven't already, you can download Give a Fly. If I said that right, Give a Fly. You can download that on your phone and donate straight to Park Windsor. You can also um, download Vidmo. That's on your online service. And you can also pull up Park Windsor Baptist Church and place your donations there. Or you can also go online to 
parkwindsorbaptistchurch.com, and you can give, press donations, and you can give to the church that way. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for these tithes and offerings. May it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, Father God. Bless the giver and a special blessing upon those who wanted to give but could not. It is in Jesus' name we thank you, Lord. Amen. I do have a card I would like to read. It states, a heartfelt thank you for your kindness. When I think of someone who's thoughtful and kind, I think of you. You have a special gift for caring. And I feel so grateful for you and your good heart. Park Windsor Church family, we sincerely appreciate all of your acts of kindness shown to us during our time of loss of our brother Joseph Bolton. And this is from Leonard and Barbara Hart. officer for leading us in our uh, tithes and offering as well as our uh, announcement. We're thankful to God for Deacon Beckett. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask that you, my brothers and sisters, right now, wherever you are, uh, now prepare your hearts as we prepare to go come to the table of the Lord. You can get your favorite juice or water Amen. Uh, maybe a cracker, maybe bread, whatever that you may have that you can use uh, today as we come uh, to commune together. Is it an amazing church family that God has allowed us an opportunity, amen, in the first Sunday in July to gather together, to commune together? So we'll give you an opportunity to get your family together, get ready, get your juice, get your cracker or bread, whatever that God has placed in your heart to use, amen, as we gather together. Our brothers and sisters, this is not our table, but it is the table of the Lord. And our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
ask all of those who have accepted him as their personal Lord and Savior. He says, come and dine with me. He says that we gather together to dine together to remember what the Lord has done for us at Calvary. He says to us to examine ourselves. He tells us to look within our hearts and in our mind. If we see anything that is not lined up with the Lord, he says, this is the opportunity, this is the time that you have now to ask God to cleanse you, to ask God to forgive you for any sins or thoughts or anything that you have in your life. And so we pray that you would do that right now. At this time, my brothers and sisters, let us hear the words of institution for the bread. For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for your broken body, Father God. Yes, oh God. For what you've done, O Calvary, Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful and thank you. But you ask us to examine ourselves, Lord. So if you find anything that's misleading within us, Lord, that's contrary to your word, Lord, we ask you to remove it right now. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. And now let's hear the words of institution for the cup. After the same manner also he took the cup, which he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, that do ye as oft as you drink, ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. Father God, here we are once again, Lord. Yes. Sitting and standing in your washing machine of love. Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask you to wash us clean, Father God. Remove any stains that's in us, Heavenly Father. Anything that's contrary to your word, Father God. Help hold us up, Heavenly Father, and help us to examine ourselves, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah.
my brothers and sisters, I pray that you have your elements with you now. And the Bible says that he took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he says, take, eat all of it. The same man, he took the cup of the New Testament, he said, drink ye all of it, and let the life that is in him be in us also. Amen. Oh, yes. <laughs> you guys going to sing, and then I'm going to do a prayer. Now, come on. Let's put our hands together. Well, Nobody can love you like Jesus. No, that's right. Living, he loved me. Living, he loved me. Dying, dying, he saved me. Buried, buried, he carried my sins far away. away. He justified, dying, he justified, freed me forever. Freed me forever. So one day, one day he's coming back. Glorious oh, living, he loved living, me. he loved dying. me. Dying, he saved. He was buried, buried, he carried, he carried my, my sins far away. Dying, he justified. I was free, free me forever. And one day, one day he's coming. So glorious, glorious day. Well, now send it on. God. Amen. Praise be to God. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to be dismissed, amen, amen. We want to thank 
all of you for tuning in. But before we do, there are many of you out there that need prayer. There are many of you out there that need someone to stand in the gap for you. If you're listening right now, if you're tuning in right now, in the chat section of this live stream, just send us your prayer request. I love that. That's right. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Yes, church, you know the song. Jesus, Jesus. Brother Beckett is praying, asking prayer for his family. Sister Anderson, Brenda Robertson Anderson is praying for healing of her family and herself. We have Sister Gilcrest is praying for Sister Smith and, and family. Others are praying for unity. Mary Foster is praying for this world and praying for suffering and anxiety and depression and health issues that are in our world. Sharon Moore is praying uh, for her granddaughter. Sister Taylor is praying for those who are having surgery. Sister Simon is praying for healing. Carl is praying for prayer for his family and for the church family. Sister uh, Perrine is praying for family. The Tolls are praying for family. Sister Wright is praying for healing for all of us. The Capers family is desiring prayer. Sister Wright is desiring prayer for her family. Sister Onetta Reed is praying for her granddaughter. We also praying uh, for. Deaconess Riggs, we're praying for Terry, we're praying for the entire family, praying for the unity of the church. Vanessa Davis is praying for health and finance and for a family and unity. Hallelujah. The Bolden family is praying for family. The Irving family is praying for the family and the world. We're praying for grandmothers and grandfathers. Amen. Lewis family is praying for the Jackson and Lewis family. Many are praying for deliverance. And as you continue to turn in your prayer requests for cousins who need healing, just know that the Lord is praying for you, that the Lord hears your prayer. Just know that God is with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for new, a new technology where we could see that those who have put in prayer requests, many of the prayer requests, Lord, is about family, family healing for sickness, family healing for those who are hospitalized and family healing for those who have lost their jobs and family healing for unity and togetherness, family unity and praying for families right now, Lord, praying for children who are out of school and getting ready to go back to school. We're praying for those college students of our church and elsewhere who got to get ready to go back to college and not knowing how things are going to work within this pandemic. Oh, Lord, praying for mothers and fathers right now, who God, who has to work from home, who are, who are, who are all together, who are, who are sharing with each other each and every day. And sometimes, Lord God, we bump into each other. Lord God, we get angry. We get a little on edge, oh, Lord God. So bring peace and harmony and unity to our homes. There are many, oh, God, who are praying for those who, who are sick with diabetes, some who have cancer, some, oh, God, who are dealing with illness. Some are still waiting uh, for donations of, for those who are going through illness and sickness, waiting 
for a kidney, waiting for a liver, oh God. We're praying, oh God, for our country. So much evilness and, evilness and hatred all around us, oh God. But we know that you are right there every step of the way with us. Bring peace and harmony and unity to our, to our president, to our country. Help him to see and to hear you, Lord. Touch the Senate and the House. Touch our mayors and our governors, oh Lord. We need you, Lord. We pray for those members of our congregation and friends who are there who are just trying to hold on, Lord. Sometimes, oh God, the cares of this world can weigh us down and some of us feel like we want to quit. We pray, oh God, that you give us some stick to itiveness. Help us to persevere, Lord God, even through these dark times. We lift all of our ministers to you right now. Reverend Ross, and we lift up Reverend Snipes and Brown, and we lift up Brother Brandon, who is recuperating from surgery. For those members who have lost loved ones, oh God, we pray that you would give them comfort of spirit. We thank you, Lord God. And we pray, oh God, that each and every day we, we, we will lean and trust in you each and every day. We need you, Lord. We really do need you, Lord. And so, Lord God, we don't know anyone else to turn to but you. We know that you hear our prayer. And we know that you will answer our prayer. You may not come, Lord, when we want you to come, but you are always on time. So give us the patience to wait on you. And so we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And we praise you for what you're doing. For all of your goodness and your mercy. Amen. Let us stand. Lord, we thank you for your word. That reminds us, oh God, that even though you want us to continue to pray, and to pray for ourselves and pray for our country and pray for each other. You remind us each and every day that God is praying for us, that Jesus is praying for us, praying that we will be unified, praying, oh God, that we will be satisfied, praying, oh Lord God, that we'll find joy, praying, oh God, that we will be sanctified in you. As you prepare a future place for us, we say thank you, Lord. Now be with us as we go our way. Help us, oh God, to be safe out there. Help us to continue to wash our hands, oh Lord. Help us, oh God, to continue to put on our face masks. Help us, oh God, to still have social distancing. Please, oh God, help us, oh God, and all, all over the world, help us, oh God, to do what's right. Help us not to be selfish and think about, it's okay, I don't have to wear a mask, I, that I'll be selfish, it doesn't matter. But help us to think about our brother and sister, our fellow man, and put on the mask and wear the gloves and do the things that will protect us so that we can bring these numbers down, oh Lord. Help us, oh God. Now to him who's able to keep you from falling, and present your faultless for a stone with exceeding great joy. To the only wise Father be glory, dominion, and majesty, both now and forevermore. Let the children of God sing together. Amen. God bless you, Park Windsor.